take a breath and go, why am I struggling right now? And if I just jump into a master's program, am I going to do anything different? Is my life different so that I can prove myself or am I just going to continue the same trends? Ask Dr. Gray pre-med Q&A brought to you by Blueprint MCAT. How are you doing today? I'm good. Awesome. What can I help you with? Um, I am struggling. Okay. <laughs> so I need advice. Um, I basically have just graduated. Um, okay. Temple University, I graduated with a Bachelor's of Science in Public Health. And that was in 2021. And like right after, um, I am now at a university that's close to me and I'm doing the pre-med classes. So I'm currently towards the end because this is like two years now. Um, I'm at the end, but I'm not like doing so good, like grade wise. Mm -hmm. And um, I just need to know like, cause I wanna, I'm looking into master's programs, but I really want a master's in public health, but I don't know if that's gonna be beneficial. <laughs> Exactly. Like I think you're gonna say that. <laughs> I, I'm science. shaking my head no for everyone listening. <laughs> <laughs> I know, but it's like it goes with why I want to be a physician. Like, um, yeah. I'm really passionate about like the you know health disparities among African Americans. Like, I'm yeah. really passionate about giving back to the community and starting initiatives, public health wise. So, yep. it just goes with it. But I'm like, yeah. okay, I know that it wouldn't be that beneficial. Yeah. So, so you're juggling two things, right? What are you passionate about, which is the public health side of things, the, the kind of, yeah. uh, as you mentioned, right, healthcare disparities. But you're also juggling the fact that you have to prove academic ability. And an MPH does not prove academic ability to medical schools because it's not hard sciences. Right, you're talking about statistics and uh, epidemiology and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. That's not biochemistry and physics and right? <laughs> those hard sciences. You got to yeah. say them hard, or, or they're not hard sciences. Um, so I, I think at the end of the day, you can go get an MPH if that's what you're interested in. You could potentially wait until medical school and, and find medical schools that will support you to get your MPH during medical school. Um, and, and just focus on the grade aspect now. I think for you, the biggest thing, for anyone, the biggest thing when they're in this kind of limbo area of doing post back work and struggling, the question you have to ask yourself is why? What's going on that is forcing you, or not forcing you, but that's not allowing you to prove yourself academically? And other students in similar situations will have various things going on, right? Maybe they're supporting a sick family member, and so they, they don't have time to study. Maybe they're supporting family and working full-time or working two jobs, and so they don't have time to study. If, if you have something in your life that's distracting you from proving yourself as a student because you don't have time to be a student, then you're not setting yourself up for success. And so... In, in those situations, I, I tell the student, like, just stop going to school, right? You don't have to take classes. No one's forcing you to take mm -hmm. classes. So let's remove yourself from the situation of continuing to get poor grades so that we can kind of do a reset, right? It's it's like playing a jump rope. It's like, when am I going to jump in? When I, like, you're, yeah. just, you're just waiting to jump in. Yeah. You're like, is it, is it ready? Is now the time? Yeah. <laughs> like, I don't know why that just popped into my head, but... But it, th that's kind of the game that a lot of students have to play is like, you're, you're ready to jump in and then someone dies and you're like, oh crap, now I can't, I can't go <laughs> skip rope now. Yeah. And then you're ready to jump in and then crap, I don't have any money in the bank account, I gotta go work. And so you're constantly playing this game. And so for you in your specific situation, you have to ask yourself before you kind of reflexively jump into a master's program, take a breath and go, why am I struggling right now? And if I just jump into a master's program, am I going to do anything different? Is my life different so that I can prove myself? Or am I just going to continue the same trends? No, that makes sense. And I've actually been thinking about that myself. Like, why is my grades like not where I want to be at? So I've just been kind of like, looking at youtube videos <laughs> like oh like different student like how to study as a student and things like that because i really feel like 
Um, it's just like a matter of like changing my study habits. There's like changing my study techniques. So um, that's something that I've really been like contemplating and thinking about. So, uh, so are you working? Yeah, I'm a medical assistant. How much are you working? Part time. 20 hours, so 10 like, hours? Yeah, but well, right now, since it's the summer, like I've just been picking up a lot, but it's usually like every other weekend. So it's not bad. Like, okay, weekend, so I'm during like, the week, yeah. you're you're free to be a student. Yeah. Okay, so so that's great. What about family situation? Do you are, are you supporting other people emotionally, financially, uh, physically, and anything in that yeah. realm? I would say like emotionally. Okay. Sure. Okay. <laughs> but not financially. Like, yeah okay and do you think that's yeah. distracting you from being a student yeah okay okay yeah. That, that was I a think, big yeah yeah i think the school is kind of like i use it as a distraction almost but mm. it's like it's still happening you know so it's like okay so that that's a big question mark how do how do we potentially remove yourself from that situation sometimes it's really hard to especially if it's a, a close family member <laughs> Um, so that's a big thing to think about, right? Um, yeah. the, uh, the other potential aspect is how many credits are you taking? Well, uh, it's only like two or three classes that, that I'm taking. Okay. So not a lot. Yeah. Every semester. Yeah. Do you go to office hours? Yes. You interact with the professors, TAs, whoever? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Does does the school yeah. offer tutoring to help? Yes. Okay. And the struggle is still there. Yeah. Like okay. I like I feel is like I think I know like deep down inside what I need to do. But it's like every Which time, is what? <laughs> it's like just like having the discipline of actually like studying every single day, like and, <laughs> well, and not just like duh. no, exactly no, but like that, that's the thing is, is that no, like I know, and it's just like, <laughs> like wait it's a so minute, simple, you, but... you expect me to study to get good grades? <laughs> I know, and it's like no, like not even just studying, but like actually like you know questions, practice questions, like doing more, and I know because yeah. like I just so what like, what's I'm distracting like, you? TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's my distraction uh, I know it's that and just like I don't know like I just feel like I don't know because yeah chemistry yeah I just feel like I've just always been a B student like it's just so annoying. oh that's a very defeatist mindset right there I've always been a B student <laughs> therefore I'll always be a B student you just set the ceiling on yourself I know but yeah. Well, do you think that I should retake any courses? Because like, and I'm also thinking about like going to community because it's really like expensive now at university. So yeah, uh, it depends. It, all it depends for both questions, right? Uh, retaking classes, it really depends on what you've taken uh, already, what those grades are. Does retaking versus taking upper division courses? Are you ready to take upper division courses if you really didn't learn the, the foundational stuff? So, so there's lots of question marks in there. Uh, I would recommend uh, if you don't already yet uh, have a mapped account, go put all your grades in, and then um, with the free trial of Mapped Pro, you can enter, you can like chat with our advisors right inside the platform. They can see all your grades and trends. And they can give you a lot more kind of detailed information and advice um, in terms of retaking classes. At the end of the day, the math works out the same in terms of GPA calculations. So there's there's no benefit one way or the other for that question. In terms of community college versus a four-year university, that that's the big question mark, right? Is is for a lot of people, the cost per credit is a lot cheaper at a community college. And yet there are some medical schools out there, if not many, that will look down uh, at that. And and I hate it. Uh, I hate the fact that yeah. medical schools are like, oh, community college, that, that's, not, that's not real college, right? It's, yeah. it's just stupid. So I would, uh, I, there are plenty of medical students who uh, we've worked with that I've helped um, that 
exclusively did all of their prereqs at community college. And yes, they were asked about it and they have solid reasons for why they did it. And it's like, okay, that makes sense. Thanks, right? Uh, where community college often comes into to play is sometimes in situations like yours where you have struggled uh, at the four-year university and then you jump to the community college and all of a sudden you're getting A's and someone goes, wait a minute, like this is the same student, <laughs> right? But maybe your study habits yeah. changed or maybe because yeah. from a financial standpoint, you weren't as stressed, you again, were allowed to be a better student. So there are lots of variables that just aren't accounted for when it's just community college versus a four-year university. So yeah. I think if it works better for you timing-wise, if it works better for you financially, do it and then be ready to explain it. Okay. So your biggest takeaway is saying to focus on my undergraduate pre-med courses right now, like yep. instead of the master's. Yeah. I, I don't think you need to okay. jump into a master's at any point soon, especially in MPH. <laughs> um, yeah. If you go down that master's route, potentially some sort of SMP um, or a, a master's program that is specifically designed for pre-health students uh, is what I would look at that has those those hard sciences. So that's what I would potentially look at. It sounds like you're getting clinical experience, which is great. Uh, thinking about shadowing, that kind of stuff, all, all those other things. Yeah. And I was going to ask to, um, for the medical assistant, like, is it, since I'm going to probably have like more than a thousand hours, wow. um, what if like volunteer, like, it's like, is that enough? Like, I'm just like, cause I know it's getting super competitive. So I'm like, I do have like research. Mm -hmm. I have like, I'm leader of organizations in undergrad Great. and even like last semester I was a leader position, but I'm awesome. just like wondering. What, yeah. What do you mean volunteer? I'm not really sure what you mean there. Yeah, like I don't have that many volunteer hours. Like non-clinical kind of community service hours? Yeah, like I have hours, but it's not as much as like clinical. Like, hours. Yeah, I mean, you don't okay. have to have a thousand hours of everything. Okay. Um, <laughs> okay. I, I will tell you, uh, and, and I'm just starting to talk about this. Uh, I'm hearing more and more from deans and directors of admissions that community service is something that is becoming more and more important to admissions committees. So does that mean you need a thousand hours like you have <laughs> clinical experience? No, yeah. but does it mean once every couple of months you're at the soup kitchen or homeless shelter or Habitat for Humanity or at the senior center yeah. doing stuff? Yeah. So just continue to look at things like that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think you answered all my questions because they were like interwined. And so your biggest, what would be your biggest advice for improving GPA? Like, if you yeah, I, I think it's just a hard reflection on why you're not getting good grades now without mm -hmm. that crappy mindset of like, oh, I'm just a B student. <laughs> I know, That's yeah. not the answer. So it's it's trying to exhaust all of your resources, going to office hours, finding a tutor, um, making yeah. sure like, do you have ADHD or dyslexia or some other learning disability that's potentially holding you back? You'd be surprised how many times I have a conversation with a student and I'm like, have you ever been tested for X, Y, or Z? And they're like, no. And then they come back to me three weeks later. I'm like, oh my gosh, I have dyslexia. I never knew it. <laughs> the, the one story I, I often tell is a student who's like, I knew the information, Dr. E. I knew it. The teacher knew that I knew it because the teacher quizzed me the day before the exam. And the quiz was verbal, right? He would ask me questions and I would give the answers. I knew all the information. But when I took yeah. the test, I bombed it. And then she went and got dis tested for dyslexia. And guess what? She had dyslexia. She had a really hard time reading and interpreting what, what the words were on the paper. She had all the information in her head. She yeah. just couldn't get it out based on the, the way that she was being tested for it. And so mm -hmm. there are lots of things to think about um, that, that may be hindering your ability to be that A student. But mm -hmm. got to get out of that mindset of you are a B student. You have yeah. B grades, but it doesn't mean you're a B student. It means there's just something's not clicking. We just got to figure out why. And so okay. it's it's impossible for me to to kind of diagnose you um, through this and, and try to figure <laughs> out. And, and that's where yeah. really getting in there with the, the teachers and TAs and tutors on campus and, and really finding mm -hmm. out 
where that disconnect is. Is it the information coming in? Is it the information going out? Um, and then looking at the rest of your lifestyle. Are you exercising and sleeping and all these other things that contribute to academics? Right, right, all right. Those are all my questions. <laughs> all right, um, because we're sponsored by Blueprint MCAT, uh, when you are getting ready for the MCAT, go to blueprintmcat.com, get a free account. Okay. Um, you get a half-length diagnostic, a free full-length exam, all that good stuff as well. 